Welcome to the off-grid enclave ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a great day. In this part of the do-it-yourself body armor series we will be looking at armor plates and how to build them. In the first part I will be showing how to modify and reinforce existing hard-pressed Kevlar plates or steel plates. In the second part I will be showing how to make your own armor plates from compressed fiberglass and epoxy composite. Without much further talk let's get right into it. The armor plates we will be modifying first are Italian Army Soar Plus hard pressed Kevlar plates. I do have a ballistic rating of about SK2. If you're interested in the armor ratings, what they exactly mean and so on, I recommend you guys watch my video from casual to blast suit. I explain the armor ratings in there. These Kevlar plates are about 8 to 9 mm in thickness come with about 1.5 cm of trauma pad and an additional layer of 1.5 mm of Kevlar. Compared to armor plates that go into plate carriers, these plates are quite big. They are about 44 on 40 cm. That is quite fine for a back plate, but for a front plate it limits arm movement quite a lot. I used a circular band saw to cut appropriate pieces off the plate and make it suitable for the front. To satisfy the needs of the internet comments of everybody saying can you shoot it please, here is a video of a gentleman shooting the civilian version of these plates that are about 1 mm thinner than the military version. I will be posting a link to the full video in the description. Dead center. The bullet tumbled a little bit left. No penetration. Next, the TT-33 Tokarev pistol. The hit was close to the 9mm previous shot. Nevertheless, the bullet tumbled to the upper right and didn't penetrate. To beef up the plate's level 3A rating or SK2 rating, we will be adding a layer of 6mm thick small ceramic tiles on top of the Kevlar plate. The tiles I picked are 2.5 on 2.5 cm and given they are mounted on a mesh already, have a very nice bending angle. It suits the form of the plates quite well. There's different hardness grades for ceramics. For this purpose one should always choose the highest hardness grade available. Thanks to the small tile size it increases the multi-hit resistance of the plate a lot. If a ceramic tile were to get hit and it cracks, the crack will only continue on that small tile and not spread out through the plate. One layer of 6mm ceramics should be reasonable protection against 5.56 caliber. However, if one wants to be reasonable protect against 7.62mm caliber, one should add two layers of ceramics on top of the level 3A hard pressed Kevlar plate. This principle applies to steel plates just as well. For the next step we got ourselves a strong industrial grade adhesive. After plugging it into the glue gun, we apply a proper dot on each of the small tiles. Next, we firmly press the adhesive layered tiles to the Kevlar plate and keep it pressed there for about 50 minutes to spread out the glue really well. Six and a half hours later. After the adhesive properly hardened, it should look something like this. You will notice that all of the small ceramic tiles have a little bit of the glue squeezed left and right of them. That shows that the adhesive is quite equally spread. The obvious effect if one does not tailor the armor plate exactly to the size of the ceramics is you will have spots that are not covered by the ceramics. For the next step we replace the adhesive in the glue gun with silicone. We will be using the silicone to fill all the gaps in between the tiles. This has multiple reasons. Silicone does stay flexible for quite a while after it's hardened. Due to its flexibility it will take quite a bit of impact one of the tiles were to get hit, so it stops the pressure wave from touching the other tile. Also silicone is rather heat resistant and waterproof. It has some adhesive properties, overall a nice package. In the last step to finish up the plate we use a lot of duct tape and cover the plate well. This doubles down as spall liner as well, as protect the ceramics against minor bumps. The fair point does come up, what does one do with such big plates if not fit them in a plate carrier? One example would be I use these to beef up German flag vests. 
I keep the original soft Kevlar padding in the flag vest and add the modified plate in front. This will have an armor rating of SK3 and stop at 7.62. Another good option for these plates is the British Osprey Combat Armor Series. If one adds a zipper on the bottom, the plates fit quite well. On the topic of combat armor, as you can see, most of the combat armors will have side plates. I built these myself, so up next we will be having a look how to build them. As you have seen in the last step of the chest plate we built, we also constructed two other sets of plate types. For the groin area and for the sides. The building process is exactly the same, so I will summarize that and only show one. What you see here is a ballistic groin protector from the British Army. It comes with a ballistic rating of SK2. We already made white cutouts of paper for where we want the plates to be. I don't want the plate to be filling the textile pocket all the way. I want the plate to be centered somewhat, so I leave about 2 to 3 centimeters of wiggle room on each side. As you made it this far into the video, consider leaving a like if you enjoyed this content. Subscribe and hit the bell to keep up to date with further videos. If you have questions, input or anything of that order, don't be shy, hop on our Discord, I'll put the link down there in the description. Or leave a comment and I'll see to respond. For the next step I use a solid steel core. This is in no way required and can be subsidized with more layers of fiberglass mat. However, I find it quite convenient to work with and generate the general form with a steel core. For this purpose I use 2mm of rolled steel. I will be using this angle grinder and of course the appropriate security measures to cut the plates out of this. A few moments later. After having the rough form cut out with the angle grinder, we go ahead and clean the corners, make sure they're not too sharp. This is to avoid damaging or cutting the fiberglass mats when we wrap them around the steel core in the next step. Now I go ahead and wrap the steel core with its very thin fiberglass mats. For the groin area plates I went with 40 turns, so 80 layers in total. For the side plates I went with 60 turns, so 120 layers in total. Every 10 layers I added a layer of thick woven fiberglass mat. I secured the wrapping with a tiny strip of paper tape. What we need next is a press and some packing material. I decided for these two simple wooden boards and about a bazillion screw clamps. To mix the epoxy properly it is recommended to have multiple small containers. The epoxy I chose for this is usually used for boat construction. It takes about 360 minutes to harden. We prepare the armor plates in the press. Mix the epoxy and make sure we soak both sides of the plates very well with the epoxy. This might take a few minutes and is quite a messy job overall. Make sure to wear gloves. After soaking all sides of the plates in epoxy and making sure that the fiberglass mats are well dipping wet, I packed the plates in between the two wooden boards and applied the screw clamps. Epoxy does not only need time to harden, but also temperature. I will leave this in a warm spot for about three days. Three days later. After the epoxy hardened properly, you can take the plates out of the form. You will notice that the excess epoxy that has been squeezed out of the fiberglass mats will need to go somewhere, so it formed around the plates in the press. I used my bandsaw to cut the excess epoxy off the plates. A few moments later. After cutting the plates out with a saw and using some sandpaper to smooth the corners, we have quite a workable base plate. The ballistic properties of these homemade plates of course varies with the materials used. The more layers, the better. The thicker the fiberglass is, the better. Woven fiberglass mats are a lot better than pressed fiberglass mats. There is a lot of parameters that play into this. If you want to be sure, buy a plate that has been rated by a company. To beef up the ballistic properties of the base plate, we do the same as with the chest plate. We use industrial adhesive to add 6mm thick small ceramic tiles to the plate. 
With the ceramics added, I'm well confident that these blades will surpass the SK2 rating. However, they will likely not fill the requirements for a SK3. We add a bit of silicone in between the tiles and wrap the plates in duct tape to give them a reasonable good finish look and protect them against random bumps. There is a few disclaimers I still want to add to this video. There is countries which do have laws that concern body armor. Always stay within the confidence of your local law. Double check on the internet or ask an expert if need be. Be safe and responsible. Don't be building your own body armor and shooting your friends with it to test and see if it works. Hey, okay? use your brain, don't be stupid. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, enjoy your day and make it count.